February 9th, 11.15am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we reconvene. Alright, I'll help you any way I can. First, about that night, you really didn't go to the Inner Temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you in the training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room in Hazakura Temple. Very well. The second thing, then. That night, the temple's snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11pm that night. Were you the one who used the snowmobile? There's only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out to Dusky Bridge? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Iris. I can't tell you about that yet. Yet? Not until her safety is confirmed. Huh? Safety of the Acolyte. The Acolyte, huh? You must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Elise Junim? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, no psycho locks. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You'll discover this for yourself soon enough. February 9th, 11.36am, District Court, courtroom number 7. Court will now reconvene. Ms. Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behaviour in the gallery. Suspicious behaviour? He was sketching something, very intensely. Dare I ask what the witness was sketching when he was detained? Again, I don't really have a good German accent. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> you drew a terrifying woman armed with a demonic face and a vicious vip. Apparently presumed its intention was to capture you- Ah! Anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Maurice Dunim, I hope you're ready. Get in here. Would seem that whip is going to see plenty more use today. Ouch! Your sketch is in contempt of this court. Hey! I was just artistically rendering- Ouch! You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you a subpoena, correct? L look, I'm nothing but a fledgling artist training out in the mountains. I'm only down here in the city because I ran out of green paint. Well, to use the technical term for the colour, Viridian. Larry. This isn't an art store, now is it? I know, I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work. I hope. Th that's it. Thanks, buddy. Kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train wreck of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. So see, I've got nothing to do with this trial. At all. I expect all of your faces to be red when you realise this mistake. Bright red. Or, to use the technical term, Crimson Lake. Ow, ow, ouch. Ow, 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 ouch, ouch. Stop your pathetic blabbing and testify like a man. Like a- like a woman? Like- like, I don't think- I don't think Francisco von Karma's big on toxic masculinity, but okay. 
Refrain from whipping me, business von Karma. Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify now. Mm, this is too much for me. Witness testimony. What I saw. <laughs> I was at that lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a s snowmobile. <laughs> I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I edgy? Witness, please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I I'm just a nobody. Nothing but a small, worthless man, aren't I? And why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation or anything else? Mr. Edgeworth, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. He's recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think he's finally realised for himself just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right, I'm behind everything, every case. Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy. Well then, let us proceed with the cross-examination. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. Cross-examination. Okay, let's get pressing. We want to find out more. Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edgeworth. This one single statement is so full of contradictions. For a moment there, I thought I was going to collapse. Hmm. So, Witness, any idea as to where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Depending on your answer, I may stay my VIP. Okay, give me a minute. Well, it was snowing that night, so I couldn't possibly have seen the stars. That rundown shack is hardly a lodge, is it? And even if the stars could be seen, it isn't like I was there to look at them, right? See? You can do it if you try. <laughs> Ow, 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 ouch! There's only one issue here. What you saw at Dusky Bridge. Hold it. A number of times? How many? Maybe five times? That went once every 20 minutes. Which means you spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night? You bet. Real love is about waiting with your heart in your hands. Love, you say. This man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. Using this blackmail letter. Blackmail? No, no, that was simply a practice of overflowing love. Ag! You huffy, puffy, loosey goosey excuse for a vimpering, viney bus of a witness. So, what did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy, puffy, loosey goosey excuse for a vimpering, whining bus of a witness, eh? Um, well, you see... Being called those names didn't seem to bother him at all. Hold it. Larry, you really didn't see it? Hey, you need to hit your desk, I can hear you. I didn't see it, I didn't see a s s snowmobile. Larry, say snowmobile for me, please. Snowmobile? You truly have nothing to hide. And why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? I mean, he might just have a speech impediment, but this is Larry. We know he doesn't. I guess. I guess? Shut up! W what is this? I don't know. Don't ask me. Seems that I'll need to start from a more obvious contradiction. I'm going to strike the blow that will finally get him to spill the beans. You didn't meet anyone? That's right, because I've got nothing to do with this. I'm just here to buy some Viridian paint, okay? Come on, I expect to see those Crimson Lake faces, now! It would appear that simply pressing him isn't going to be enough, Mr. Edgeworth. Indeed. Seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do with this to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us any more time. I need to slice through his obvious contradictions and keep things moving along. Okay, so the obvious contradiction is that we know some, like, Larry met someone, 
because earlier in this case, we met Larry at the bridge. Of course, we were playing as Phoenix Wright, we were not playing as Miles Edgeworth, but yes, that is what happened. Objection. There you go. Larry Butts. I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're pretty pathetic, and you cause all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But, having realised just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. Edgy, are you going to console me? Certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incidents you create. Wah! Totally pinning this on me. Now then, let us talk about the night of the murder. Mr. Bikini, after seeing the murder took place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened to cross a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts. That's right, me, in the flesh. Hmm, listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain pretty pathetic, you'll continue to cause these incidents. <laughs> That reality will not change. But, what do you want me to do then? Larry, what you need to change is your inner self. But for now, what you saw that night. Testifying truthfully about this one issue is all I need from you. Gee, I... I think I've finally woken up. Well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it, I'll testify. Well, I'm not sure this will go especially well. <laughs> I'll ask again then, witness. What did you see on the night of the murder? What I saw, part two. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been around 10.30pm. I was lying under my bedding when a white flash almost blinded me. I looked out the window and Dusky Bridge was on fire. There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran into Nick. Hmm... You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happened to the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a three-day stint chasing a girl. Ugh. Totally burnt out. Like, almost totally gone. Ugh. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. What did you say? Oh, don't worry. It's nothing life-threatening. You just caught a cold. You never know with that man if she'd be called lucky or unlucky. Now, Mr. Edgeworth, please commence your cross-examination. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know... I was busy being excited, I guess. Hmm, excited? Dare I even ask? I set the meeting time at 10pm, right? But I couldn't wait. <laughs> I thought she might come early too. Early too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Shut up! Don't go picking my fond memories apart! Anyway, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. But every 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so I went back to the shack to wait for her. This light was, of course, lightning. Like, a pow! Like a slap from Naomi, honestly. A big bada-boom. Ugh. Agh! Or a little like that. Ugh. That's more like a punch from Miranda. Uh, I don't like Larry. Witness, did you actually see the lightning hit the bridge? Well, I was a bit startled by the flash of light, so... Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up as well from the fire in my heart. And that's why you vent to take a look at the bridge? Well, to be honest... It was freezing cold, so at first I thought, forget it, I'm not leaving my covers. But it had pretty much stopped snowing, so I don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm. 
I'm not sure I care for the forget it attitude you had at first, witness. said right away, but exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm. The lightning fell, and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, suddenly thought, gotta go check this out. How far is this small shack you were in from the bridge? Hold on, well it had pretty much stopped snowing. It's about a five minute walk? How did Dusky Bridge look when you got there? Like I've recovered a piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Yeah, let's go. Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, Edgy? What's with the serious face? Why didn't you call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. There is a public phone right by Dusky Bridge, correct? Well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Huh? Yeah, okay. A reason. My reason. It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone, I just didn't have time to, okay? You claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as Wright? Yeah. I thought, I'd better tell someone about this. But then Nick came up yelling about murder. It totally made me forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by then anyway. What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible case of unease. It was after contacting the police that Phoenix Vites fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it, more or less. Told me about the burning bridge yesterday, but there's still something that doesn't quite fit. Looks like, despite his change of heart, Larry still isn't telling us the whole truth. Okay, so the problem is, if it took him five minutes to get there... Uh, where's the weather data? Here we go. The lightning struck at 10.45, it took 30 minutes for the fire to burn out, so it is impossible for Riot to have arrived with the bridge still burning. Uh, I think we just object with the weather data here? Objection! Yes. Your very existence being a contradiction, I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. What the hey, Edgy? You make me sound like some sort of alien. Your testimony is conclusively contradictory. Problem here is time. I've never been the best timekeeper, you know. Three minutes after Billy leaves on foot, you follow him on your bicycle. How long does it take for you to catch up with him? Terrible at those. This is much more simple. You saw the lightning strike Dusky Bridge, and immediately went to see what had happened. Is this correct? Yeah, well, I wasted about five minutes first, but more or less. I have the weather data from the night of the murder here. According to this, the lightning fell at 10.45pm. You say it takes less than five minutes from the shack to Dusky Bridge, meaning you probably got there at around 11pm. That all sounds about right, I guess. And then Nick showed up and did his falling act. That is impossible. What do you mean? 11pm is when the murder occurred in Hazakura Temple. Thus, Wright was still there, in the courtyard. There is no way that Larry could have encountered him at Dusky Bridge at that time. Ah, excuse me, I, I have an objection. You do? Edgy, how many times do I have to say this? I'm not Larry, I'm Larice Junim. It has not been proven that the murder occurred at 11pm. Sister only said around 11. In which case, it could have been earlier than that. Watch your footing there, Ms. Franziska von Karma. The slope ahead is slippery. But there is still no way that Wright could have been at Dusky Bridge at 11pm. And why not? It is clearly written here in the weather data report. It took around 30 minutes for the bridge to burn out. Therefore, the bridge must have been burning until at least 11.15pm. Which means, what exactly? Wright did not see the bridge while it was being consumed by the flames that night. In fact, he did not arrive on the scene until after the flames had died down. Larry, 
You arrived at the bridge at 11pm, but Wright did not make it there until at least 11.15. I suggest you to stop hiding things and just tell us the whole truth. Now then, what happened during these missing 15 minutes? Fuck. I... I feel like I just got brutally woken up by toilet splashback. Guess I was still sleeping after all. <laughs> Pinch me. Order, 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 order! So there was a missing 15 minutes prior to meeting Phoenix Vite. I hardly see that as much of a problem. Yeah, not much of a problem at all. Really? The bridge is burning before your eyes and there's a phone right next to it. Why then did you not report the accident? Yes, witness, why didn't you? Were you there simply to watch the bridge burn? And therein lies the problem. For even after the bridge had burnt out, he was still there. Staring into space, this witness didn't even attempt to fulfil his civic duty. That's what it sounds like. Ah, but this is Larry we are talking about, and even he is incapable of being so stupid. Which means there has to be a reason for his inaction. Edgy. I think it's about time I got serious with you, dude. Just as I thought, you've been playing with us all this time. Listen, I'm... I'm gonna tell you everything. Are you sure you want to hear it all? Y yes. I may really say it this time. Everything! Yeah! Then say it. Very well. I have a terribly bad feeling about this, however. Let's have the witness finally give us the whole truth. Now, this 15 minute gap, what were you doing, witness? I'm a Dunim. I'm an artist. What do you think I was doing? Sketching in front of the bridge. I was whipped up into a frenzy of art. Shock and awe that I was feeling, I transferred it all directly onto the page. Before I realized it, the flames had gone out and then he came running up. Hmm... I suppose artists can be strange folk. That's right, I'm willing to sacrifice everything in order to draw the perfect sketch. Putting the truth from the sound of it. Mr. Edgeworth, has this removed the last of your doubts? Not at all, Your Honour. One very large doubt still remains. And what would that be? This is a surprisingly believable story, especially considering the source. So why did he think he needed to hide it from us until now? I intend to drag the reason out of him. <laughs> You'll regret this, Edgy. The missing 15 minutes. Hold it! Tell us, Larry. My name is Larice, get it right. I mean, yeah, you probably should use his name. Things like that are what keep you from being popular with the ladies like I am. Oh. I don't like him. I don't like him. Who exactly are you? I'm Larice Dunim, apprentice extraordinaire. That's what he calls himself in any case. And you are an artist? Of course, I'm an artist, the real thing. Yet again, that's what he calls himself. Names mean nothing. There's only one issue I care to discuss. What were you doing? That is a very big issue indeed. Sketching? The burning bridge? The burning bridge and everything that came with it. What? Came with it? You want to hear this from my lips, do you, Edgy? You'll regret this. That sketch of mine is... Gah! Enough. Just take that ridiculous sketch of yours out already, Vetness. What are you talking about? I don't know what you mean. That does indeed appear to be the fastest solution. I'll leave it to you, Mr. Edgeworth. What should I do? I've got a terrible feeling the instant this sketch is revealed, the entire world may be changed for what is depicted there. We need to see the sketch. Let's go. Larry, I wonder if you could show us your sketch, please. Well, well, I mean, I couldn't have imagined it'd turn out like this. Imagined what? But Larice Dunim's debut would take place here, today, like this. Ow, 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 ouch. Show it, now. Okay, but steal yourselves. 
this is the world of Larice Dunim. Ah. Um, well... So this... This is Dusky Bridge, correct? Quite a large bridge, isn't it? Your response, Miss Von Karma? Yes, Vel. It's a better drawing than I expected. Isn't it? Isn't it? I struggled to reproduce those flames. I really did. Yes, I'm sure you did. Mm, it's going to get ugly. No one has the courage to bring it up, it seems. This mysterious flying object. Larry. What? The burning bridge is fine. But what is that unfortunate looking figure? Oh, you spotted that? I thought you might. However much I might want to ignore it, I can't. It's Iris, of course. Iris! I wish she'd take better care of herself. We have to plan for our future, you know? What would have happened to her if she had injured herself flying like that? Larry, please, answer this next question honestly. Okay. Are you really claiming to have seen this? Are you claiming to have seen the silhouette of the defendant? Lying over a bridge that was engulfed in flames? Yep, that's what I saw. That's why I drew it. I'm an artist, a real artist. Ah. Uh, you. Hi, the girl, she's really high up in this picture. Get it? Any joke there? <laughs> what was that for? This is all a bad dream. I was hitting you on the cheek to test that theory. Please whip your own cheek from now on if you wish to test your wild theories. A anyway, no court of law will ever acknowledge that people can fly. Actually, there is some precedent for this. He was flying pretty high, my sweet Iris. He was about 30 feet above the bridge at least. It was really something to see. But this has to be some kind of m mistake. Mr. Edgeworth, please bring the witness back down to earth. What? Me? This witness is your friend, is he not? Accessory to foolishness, Miles Edgeworth. Let's get back to the cross-examination, by force if necessary. Mr. Edgeworth, I expect you to expose the obvious contradiction here. I yes, Your Honor. Looks like I've got another reason to remember this moron. Well, what did you think of my debut piece? Get that thing away from me. Sorry, sketch added to the court record. <laughs> now, hurry up and cross-examine him. Okay, so... We can actually point out a contradiction here. Not that people can't fly, but that Iris was not wearing her hood. Because she gave it to Phoenix Wright. Objection! Larry, what did you really see that night? Not that I particularly care. In your position, that's just being irresponsible. I... I drew exactly what I saw. I'll give you a whole dollar that it's the truth. If that is truly the case, then there is one thing that we can say for certain. What might that be? That the person who flew over the bridge could not have been the defendant, Iris. What? What do you mean? I don't understand. Wag! Foolhardy folly of a foolish statement by an equally foolish foolhardy fool. How exactly can you make this claim? Tell us, Larry, according to this picture, the individual whom you say you saw was wearing a hood, correct? Of course she was. That rundown shack is quite away from the bridge. Hood is what told me that this floating angel was my iris. Hood is my darling iris, and iris is my darling hood. Wah! It seems there are bigger fools in this Vels than the one at the defense's bench. Larry, there's something you need to be made aware of. On the night of the murder, Iris wasn't wearing her hood. He had given it to Wright as a gift. Are you going to change your story now? Perhaps suggest it was Wright who took flight? What are you talking about? I think you understand what I mean just fine. Why? Why did Nick have Iris's hood? What? Edgy, what's going on with Iris and Nick? Why you, Nick, you dog? <sighs> Larry, 
sorry, you're the dog. I don't like you. <laughs> I do believe that this unbelievably mysterious sketch is destined to disappear, discredited and discarded, straight into the garbage. Huh. <laughs> Fog. What is what is it now, Vitness? Feels like I've been waiting 25 years for this very day to come. Edgy, that is the day I get to completely stupefy you. What? This is the meaning of your outburst, witness, witness, witness. <laughs> I hate to have to do this, but I have some definitive evidence. Definitive evidence? Iris did indeed come flying over the burning bridge. And I, Laurice Dunim, shall prove it. I didn't expect to ask this again, but we shall be needing your testimony once again. Tell us anything you know concerning the defendant as depicted in this sketch, and show us your evidence that this nightmare was actually a reality. Okay, I hope you're ready, Edgy, because I'm going to feed you a whopping serve of pain. You've been serving us a whopping serving of pain this whole time, trust me. Proof that Iris flew. When I reached Dusky Bridge, she was already gone. I was so worried, so I frantically searched all over for her. That led to me finding a beautiful crystal sphere half buried in the snow. I'm sure that Iris was simply wearing a spare hood. After all, no one else could have lost a crystal sphere that night. Hmm. <laughs> a crystal sphere? This one. Pretty, isn't it? But find his keepers. That sphere. Where did you find it? Let me see. Around here somewhere? Looks about right. And it was half buried in the snow. It pretty much stopped snowing by then, but there was still some falling as I walked to the bridge. Hmm. What accepts this crystal sphere? That's mine, okay? I want it back afterward. Hmm. There's something on it. Oh my, it's blood. What? Blood? Crystal Sphere added to the court record. You ready, Edgy? By tomorrow morning, you'll be calling me Master Larry. Yeah, I like the sound of that. No one's gonna push me around anymore. Didn't you want to be called Larice Junim on me a few minutes ago? <laughs> okay, so basically we need to prove that someone else could have lost Crystal Sphere that night. We do have proof of that, we might do some pressing just to see what he te tells us. So, you went to the burning bridge? That's right, to meet Iris. He actually flew to get to me, the least I could do was meet her halfway. But the defendant was not at the bridge when you got there, you say. I guess she went back to Hazakura Temple. So she's a girl after all, just wanted to look her best. Oh. Larry, you are obnoxious. Must be lone, lovely to live in the fantasy land of Larry's mind. Actually, it's so depressing that I can't even work up the energy to point. So, what did you do next? Hold it. So you searched all over for her? She was flying pretty high, you know. I thought maybe she slipped on her landing and got hurt. Hey, it was more than possible. Also, when I headed out to the shack the first time, I was snacking on a banana. I was pretty sure I threw the peel away somewhere around there, so, you know. Can one guy really be this stupid? So, did you find any signs of her so-called landing? Hmm, I don't really remember. I kept on falling over myself and kind of lost it for a while there. You fell over yourself? Yeah, the snow was deep and there was even a banana peel up. <laughs> yup. There's Stupid, and then there's Larry Butts. Short of it is that you didn't find any signs of her landing, correct? And what happened next? Half buried? It was sitting in the snow with a little gathered on top of it. It was very hard to spot, actually. I mean, it was dark out, too. I'm impressed. You did well to find it. No matter what you may think when you look at me, I'm a pro, a genius security guard. Used a pen light I borrowed from my company to help in my search. And it sparkled really brightly as if it was saying, Here I am to me. It does indeed look very much like the crystal sphere on Iris's hood. 
But need I remind you that she was not wearing her hood that night? Ichnon is assigned their own hood and they are assigned only one. I don't know anything about that, okay? Naris is special, alright dude? Even if she did steal a spare hood, I'll forgive her. This is getting us nowhere, a destination for the day it seems. However, this crystal sphere was found near the bridge, that is a fact. If it didn't come from a hood, where could it have come from? That is the question I am to answer. Let me confirm this one last time, Larry. The reasons you thought that this was Iris are the hood and this crystal sphere, correct? That's right, my gut is never wrong. I met that old bikini the next morning, and her crystal sphere was still there, safe and sound. Indeed. She was wearing it in this very room earlier today. This case isn't going to end without a fight. Exposing the obvious contradictions in this testimony will be easy, but I fear that all that awaits us are further mysteries. Okay, so we need to find someone else who got a lost crystal sphere, and we do know someone with that property. Uh, if we look at Elisa's staff here, you may notice there's an opening there. If you look at this, uh, we have a picture of Elise here somewhere. Here it is. As you can see, there's supposed to be a crystal sphere there. <laughs> Objection! Larry, that night, there was someone. Someone who lost a crystal sphere. There was? Who? Who was this stupid idiot? Miss Elise Dunim, the mentor to a stupid idiot. Victim? I have a photo of her here. And on the end of her staff, you can see a familiar looking crystal sphere. Hey! That's my photograph! Give it back! Ow, ouch! A crystal sphere like that is quite easy to find. I have one just like it on my brooch. My, my broach. They look nothing alike. In any case, please take a look at this. This is the victim's staff found at the scene of the crime. Ah, the crystal sphere. It's gone. What? 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 It just what does this mean? Anyone jumped or flew across the bridge that night? It certainly was not Iris. After all, she was not wearing her hood. More importantly, Crystal Sphere found at the landing site was not hers either. That means the one who flew and dropped the sphere was the victim, Miss Elise Junim. Fool alongside another fool on a fool's errand to reach a foolish conclusion. First of all, this sketch, which I prefer to call a scribble, is ridiculous. People cannot fly, thus it is rejected. Y you can't do that! I saw it with my own two eyes! And this crystal sphere is nothing more than a red herring. Do you honestly believe that? Give it some thought, and I'm sure you'll realise it is well, Miles Edgeworth. At least Janim was, in her, was buzzing her room on the night of the murder. There was no reason for her to go to Dusky Bridge. Therefore, this sphere cannot be related to this case. That is all. Objection! Ms. Franziska von Karma. The only people who will accept that explanation are scatterbrains and clowns. Why are you pointing at me? The victim's crystal sphere was found near the bridge on the night of her murder. Yet you expect us to believe that this has nothing to do with the case? That crystal sphere. It was probably thrown away at the bridge after the murder. After the murder? There is blood on the crystal sphere, isn't there? This naturally suggests that it was thrown away after the murder took place. Killer placed it there to throw the investigation off the scent. Which is the exact same reason that he drew that ridiculous sketch. What? You mean... I'm the killer? No wag! All joking aside, just then did this crystal sphere appear near the foot of the bridge. Unless this can be proven in some way, I refuse to believe this is related to the case. Makes a valid point. There is no evidence that Elise Junim left Hazakura Temple that night. However, if somehow this crystal sphere 
to be proven to have been dropped before the victim was killed, then this case is going to transform into something else entirely. The response, Mr. Edgeworth? I want your final opinion on the disposition of this crystal sphere. If it is not related to the case, then this witness who you called will have been nothing more than a monumental waste of time. Prepare yourself for some very appropriate punishment, Miles Edgeworth. Can I prove it? Can I prove that the crystal sphere was dropped before the murder took place? Yeah, of course I can. Can I prove it? That isn't the issue. Simply prove it. That's the only option. That's what he'd do. My boyfriend. That's the way Phoenix Wright would do this. Your Honor, allow me to prove something to you. I will prove that this crystal sphere is a vital link to solving this case. We'll do what? That look in your eyes. You remind me of Phoenix Vite when he is cornered. That should come as no surprise, because right now I am Phoenix Wright and I am indeed cornered. I order you to present your evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Evidence that proves that the crystal sphere was indeed dropped before the murder. I think we present the weather data, because the, the, the sphere was half covered in snow, uh, but the victim was not. Which is why it's showing a picture of the victim. I think it's the weather data you present to prove that. that. Your response, Ms. Von Karma? I think that's the wrong thing to present. Birds of a feather flock together. Are you familiar with this phrase? Miles Edgeworth. I think one such bird is calling for its fellow now. Go, go, Edgy, do it, prove it, win, win, win! Is cheering. It's as though I'm listening to the ominous cause of ravens! Okay, so that was the wrong piece of evidence. You can see my point, though. One more chance, Your Honor. I can't turn back after coming all this way. Time of the murder and when the crystal sphere was dropped. I need to find proof that the latter happened first. Okay, so you have to present the sphere itself because it was half covered in snow. This crystal sphere, it was half buried in the snow, correct? That's right, if it hadn't stopped snowing then it would have been game over. The snow would have totally covered it. That's all I needed to hear from you, Larry. Your testimony makes one thing quite clear. What? When the crystal sphere was dropped, it was snowing, even if it was ever so slightly. Snowing? On the other hand, let us look at the scene of the murder. As proven earlier today, there is no snow on the victim's body. Ah! Therefore, Crystal Sphere must have been dropped before the murder. What? Order, order, order! On the night of the murder, the victim did indeed go to Dusky Bridge. And there, something occurred that caused the staff's Crystal Sphere to come loose. What? What could that have been? This sphere. There is some blood on it, isn't there? Allow me to raise a certain possibility at this junction. The real crime scene was near the foot of Dusky Bridge. The murder didn't take place in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard? Only a fool would suggest such a foolish piece of absolute foolishness. Just who is the fool, and which part is so foolish, Ms. Von Karma? Have you been paying any attention this whole time, Mel's Edgeworth? Sister saw everything. She saw the victim being killed by the defendant in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Objection. That's not exactly true, now is it? Put it more precisely, what she saw was... the murder weapon being removed from the victim's body. That's the same thing. No, it isn't. You said it yourself. Very little blood is actually lost, at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about then the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be then the blade is removed. If that statement is the truth, then Dusky Bridge could very easily be the scene of the murder. The murder weapon was not removed, thus there was no bleeding. You are forgetting one vital thing, Miles Edgeworth. At least Junim's body was found in Hazakura Temple. On foot, it takes 15 minutes to travel from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple. 
Let me suggest someone carried the body all that way. I've made it this far. The only place to take this is to the end. I just need to prove that my version of the events is also perfectly plausible. Now, if the defense is ready, the court would like to have an explanation. Please show us the method by which the victim's body was carried to Hazakura Temple. I believe it is a snowmobile. On that snowy night, there is one way that a body could have been moved. Snowmobile. Ah! As we know, the snowmobile was used that night. It was explained as having been used to dispose of the murder weapon. It could also have been used to carry a body. Order, 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 yeah! This... This is completely unacceptable, Miles Edge, but... You've dug yourself into your own grave. What do you mean? The only one who could have used the snowmobile was the defendant. He's the one who moved the body. Doesn't that put the final nail in your coffin? <laughs> You're too late, Francisca von Karma. And in fact, the defense has proven something else entirely. We have shown that this case requires further investigation. M what? Where was the victim Elise Janim really killed? If her body was moved, wherever for? And finally. Just what does this image mean? Do you even need to think about that? Such a creature could never see the truth, let alone describe it. This witness certainly sits on one of the lowest possible branches of humanity. However, he would never utter a lie that could hurt a girl with whom he is enamoured. He drew this, though it is something that actually happened. The defense stands firm on this point. Uh, edgy, thank you. That settles it then. I cannot give a verdict under these circumstances. Right. I seem to have fulfilled my part in this. It is just as I thought. Franziska von Karma, you make a wonderful partner. Excuse me? There was one reason, and one alone, for me being here. To expose the darkness lurking in this case, and then pass it on to right. R really? That's what this was all about? He could have just told me that from the very beginning. Then I wouldn't have had Franzi whipping me all. I. Miles Edgeva, I don't care about what you were here to do. This was my chance to finally grind you under my heel. A shame that your chance seems to have slipped you by. What a shame, Franzi! This is all your fault. Such a terrible witness. You are an affront to all the legal system stands for. Ow, 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 ouch! Demand satisfaction. I cannot believe that the witness's testimony relates to an actual event. However, there has to be some sort of answer for the questions it raises. Have his words to today been the truth or lies? Next time we gather in this courtroom, those are the matters that shall be addressed. I am counting on thorough investigations by both the defense and the prosecution. And with this, the rest is up to you, right? Court is now adjourned. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time, we're back to investigating. And as that last little bit implied, we're back to being Phoenix again. This is the only part you get to play as Edgeworth, unfortunately. Uh, I hope you had fun. I hope you have a good, like, a bit of an idea of what's going on at this point. Um, we still don't have all the pieces to put together. We will need to dive into the next part of the case to really know everything, but you might have some theories, so feel free to speculate. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!